Imagine a time machine that could whisk you away to the cinematic landscapes of 1974. The air is thick with nostalgia, and you find yourself in the heart of a bustling theater, eagerly awaiting the opening credits of a film that would leave an indelible mark on your memory. That film is Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, and your first encounter with it was nothing short of a revelation. As the lights dimmed, you were transported into a world of daring heists, unexpected friendships, and a wild road trip like no other. Can you recall that rush of excitement as Clint Eastwood and Jeff Bridges graced the screen? their on-screen chemistry sparking like lightning. Perhaps it was the unforgettable car chase scenes, the suspenseful plot twists, or the film's unique blend of humor and heart that etched Thunderbolt and Lightfoot into your cinematic lexicon. Now, let's dive deeper into the tapestry of this cult classic, unraveling some intriguing and lesser-known facts that make this film a timeless gem. Get ready to relive the magic of Thunderbolt and Lightfoot and discover a few surprises along the way. Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, a 1974 film directed by Michael Cimino, is a captivating crime comedy that blends action, drama, and character-driven storytelling. The movie follows the unlikely partnership between two distinct characters, Thunderbolt, a retired bank robber with a mysterious past, and Lightfoot, a charming drifter. Together, they embark on a quest to locate hidden loot from a previous heist, evading both the law and Thunderbolt's former criminal associates. This film stands out for its charismatic performances by Eastwood and Bridges, who bring depth and humor to their roles. The on-screen chemistry between the two leads is a highlight, infusing the narrative with a unique blend of camaraderie and tension. Sumino's direction adds a distinctive style to the movie, blending thrilling action sequences with poignant character moments. Thunderbolt and Lightfoot made a significant impact on popular culture by subverting genre expectations and showcasing the talents of its lead actors. Its legacy endures as a testament to the power of unlikely friendships and the allure of the American road trip, all wrapped in a gripping crime caper. This film has rightfully earned its place as a classic in the world of cinema, a testament to the enduring appeal of its characters and storytelling. storytelling. The production shoot for the 1974 movie Thunderbolt and Lightfoot ran for 47 days. During filming, a dangerous stunt took place where Clint Eastwood leapt onto a speeding car being driven by Jeff Bridges. Eastwood hooked his leg inside the car window while holding onto the door handle. It's worth noting that this risky stunt was performed by Eastwood himself. Additionally, the opening scenes of the film were shot at St. John's Lutheran Church in Hobson, Montana. However, in 1980, the church was sold and dismantled with plans to move it across the state to Troy. Unfortunately, these plans were ultimately scrapped, and the church was not preserved. These are some interesting facts about the 1974 movie Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, shedding light on its production and filming locations. In the 1974 movie Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, several interesting facts emerge. One notable aspect of the film is the director-writer interaction. Michael Cimino, the director, tasked Jeff Bridges with making Clint Eastwood laugh on and off camera. Bridges successfully took on this challenge, adding humor to the set. In one scene, Thunderbolt and Lightfoot enjoy a beer by the lakeside. The beer they were drinking was Olympia beer, brewed by the Olympia Brewing Company in Tumwater, Washington. However, it's worth noting that this brewery is no longer in business, and Olympia beer is now produced in Irwindale, California. Additionally, the movie opens with a church service featuring the hymn Man of Sorrows. What a name. This hymn was written by Philip Bliss in the 19th century and adds a poignant touch to the film's beginning. These facts provide insight into the behind-the-scenes dynamics and historical details in the 1974 movie Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, making it an intriguing piece of cinematic history. In 1974, Clint Eastwood took on the movie Thunderbolt and Lightfoot because he wanted to make a road movie, as revealed in American Rebel, The Life of Clint Eastwood by Mark Elliott. This film marked a departure from his usual tough guy roles. Eastwood had a reputation for efficiency on set. According to Final Cut, the making and unmaking of Heaven's Gate, he preferred not to do more than three takes for a shot. Jeff Bridges, his co-star in the film, would often approach the director, Michael Cimino, with ideas for additional takes. Cimino would defer to Eastwood, who occasionally allowed for more takes, saying, give the kid a shot. 
However, Eastwood was known to put his foot down and say, no, we got enough if he felt the shot was already satisfactory. He valued efficiency in filmmaking. Thunderbolt and Lightfoot also made a mark at the box office, ranking as the 17th highest grossing film of 1974. This success highlighted the movie's appeal to audiences during its release year. In summary, Clint Eastwood's desire to make a road movie led him to take on Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. His efficient approach to shooting, limiting takes to three or less, was a notable aspect of the production. Additionally, the film's box office success in 1974 solidified its place in cinematic history. In the 1974 movie Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, Jeff Bridges surprised audiences when he appeared in drag. Bridges once humorously remarked, it's mind-blowing. When you glance in a mirror, you feel like you're looking at your sister. His role as a leading lady earned him some teasing from his brother, Bo Bridges, and his father, Lloyd Bridges. The film's director, Michael Cimino, had the opportunity to write and direct the movie for Clint Eastwood after impressing Eastwood with his script rewrite for Magnum Force in 1973. Although the movie is set in Montana, the story takes a detour into North Idaho on the Oregon border, near Hell's Canyon on the Snake River. Interestingly, the original plan was to film in Hell's Canyon itself. However, in a bid to save money, the production team decided to shift the filming location to the Missouri River near Helena, which stood in for the Snake River. Thunderbolt and Lightfoot is a film filled with unexpected twists, both on and off the screen, making it a memorable piece of cinema from 1974. Four. In 1973, the Malpaso Company and United Artists inked a deal to produce and release two films featuring Clint Eastwood, titled Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. This announcement was made on January 8, 1973, as reported by Box Office Magazine. Jeff Bridges earned a Best Actor in a Supporting Role Academy Award nomination for his performance in the 1974 movie Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. This marked his second Oscar nomination, and interestingly, it would be his last until he received another nomination for Starman in 1984. According to the book Clint, The Life and Legend by Patrick McGilligan, Clint Eastwood believed his own performance in the film was deserving of an Oscar nod. In one scene of the movie, a television set in the vault manager's bedroom was tuned to a stand-up routine performed by the acerbic entertainer Don Rickles. Notably, Rickles had previously been Clint Eastwood's co-star in the 1970 film Kelly's Heroes. These facts offer a glimpse into the background and recognition associated with the 1974 movie Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, highlighting both the production agreement and the recognition received by its cast members. In the 1974 movie Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, several interesting facts emerge, shedding light on the film's production and Clint Eastwood's role. One notable aspect involves the use of a World War II-era 20mm Orlikon cannon by Thunderbolt, played by Clint Eastwood and his gang. In the movie, this cannon is referred to as a potential anti-tank gun. However, in reality, the Orlikon cannon was primarily used as an anti-aircraft weapon and was typically mounted on naval patrol boats and ships. Surprisingly, the Orlikon saw minimal use with U.S. Army ground forces during the Korean War, which contradicts the film's setting, where Thunderbolt and Red, portrayed by George Kennedy, were supposed to have served. Another intriguing tidbit comes from Stephen Bach's book Final Cut, where it is revealed that Clint Eastwood felt upstaged by his co-star, Jeff Bridges, during the making of the film. This dynamic added an interesting dimension to the on-screen chemistry between the two actors. Furthermore, Clint Eastwood's disappointment with the movie's initial box office performance is worth noting. Despite his prior successful collaboration with United Artists on Spaghetti Westerns, and a two-movie deal with the studio, Thunderbolt and Lightfoot didn't meet his expectations. The film's initial $9 million in receipts fell short, and Eastwood blamed the studio for inadequate promotion. Surprisingly, he never worked on another project with United Artists, marking a significant shift in his career. These facts provide a deeper understanding of the 1974 movie Thunderbolt and Lightfoot and its behind-the-scenes dynamics. It's a reminder that even iconic films can have interesting stories beyond what we see on screen. In 1974, the movie Thunderbolt and Lightfoot hit the screens, directed by Michael Cimino. This film marked Cimino's debut as a director, 
Clint Eastwood was originally set to direct it, but he passed on the role. Sumito found inspiration for the movie from the 1955 film Captain Lightfoot, directed by Douglas Sirk. Captain Lightfoot told the story of two Irish highwaymen, Captain Thunderbolt and Captain Lightfoot, as they tried to gather funds for their Irish revolutionary group. And there you have it, a snapshot of the intriguing history behind the 1974 movie Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. Clint Eastwood's change of plans, Michael Cimino's directorial debut, and the influence of a 1950s film all played a role in bringing the cinematic gem to life. 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 As we conclude our journey through the cinematic landscape of Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, I invite you to take a moment to reflect. This film, a timeless gem in the world of cinema, has left its indelible mark on each of us in unique ways. Perhaps it's the captivating performances of Jeff Bridges and Clint Eastwood, weaving an intricate tale of friendship and heists that still resonates with you. Or maybe it's the evocative cinematography, capturing the rugged beauty of the American West, that has etched itself into your memory. Thunderbolt and Lightfoot is not merely a movie, it's a tapestry of emotions, a reminder of the power of connection and the allure of adventure. It's a film that prompts us to contemplate our own journeys, the bonds we've formed, and the adventures we've undertaken. So, whether you've watched it countless times or are just discovering its magic, I encourage you to share your cherished memories and thoughts about this cinematic masterpiece. Let your words become a part of the collective love and admiration for this film. Thank you for joining us on this cinematic exploration and for your time and interest. Your voice adds to the chorus of appreciation for Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, and together we keep its legacy alive. Reflect, share, and let the spirit of Thunderbolt and Lightfoot continue to inspire. Bye.